ओके वरुण आई विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट एरर हैंडलिंग इन दिस सेशन एंड आई गेस आई एम द ओनली थिंग बिटवीन यू एंड लंच तो आई विल ट्राई नॉट टू ओवर शूट दिस सो ओके सो वेन यू टॉक अबाउट एरर हैंडलिंग सो देर आर टू स्कूल ऑफ थॉट सो पेन आई पुट ऑन माई जावा हैट राधर रिलक्टेंटली आई थिंक दैट सेंस क्लोजर इज होस्टेड ऑन द जे वी एम सो इट्स वेरी नेचुरल टू यूज JVM exception, but when I put on my functional hat, I think there must be some, you know, there there should be some abstractions or maybe some, you know, shaded macro to basically handle it in elegant way. So, so how do we handle errors in elegant way? Okay, a bit about myself. I am a software engineer at SAP Kankar. Uh, we provide expense and travel, you know, management services to other businesses. and i am a part of a small team there we write microservices in closure and you can also find me on twitter that's my handle okay about the talk i will try to you know uh, discuss some of my learnings and experiences with error, with error handling since error handling is you know it's uh, i would say it's necessary for all i mean it 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 is a very important part to all serious programming and the motivation for cutting loose from some common closure idioms uh i have uh, written a small demo web app you can find the code in, the, in this link and uh, in this talk i will not be going too deep into the implementation and the plumbing which is there so yeah okay to begin with i'll i'll just talk about this uh, very small use case to save a new blog post so as we can see uh, right from the start we have a bunch of steps like content type which has to be application json we have to validate the input json i mean application json the content type then validation of the input then the service call then the validation of the input data then the actual insert happens in the db and then yeah we end it by having a story id but at each successive step we have to handle errors and we have to respond you know at each uh, i mean at each particular step we have to respond accordingly suppose it's invalid input data we have to say 400 bad request and if a db insert fails we have to say 503 service unavailable okay so when we start you know handling errors by convention this is what the code looks like now as you can see i have pointed out some of the checks which i you know talked about in this slide as well so as we go on about you know writing applications and then accommodating other other i mean other edge cases we get a spaghetti code and it is usually marked by a lot of you know it it, it becomes very verbose and it's marked by a lot of uh, you know conditional checks such as you know this content type and then validation of new story map and so on so now i see a problem when you know the the code you know pans out this way as the use case evolves over time when i mean we have to add features on top of you know existing features it becomes a real mess so the problems with the convention i mean what we usually you know get up i mean what what we usually you know uh, having uh, at our disposal is a spaghetti code that does not scale and more so refactoring becomes harder code is difficult to maintain and within some time we have a classic example of a broken window problem where everything seems broken and nobody gives a damn okay let's not fix this because it's like that okay so what about exception handling exceptions are you know a great way of you know short circuiting but they have their related you know trade offs they lack referential transparency a lot of imperativeness is induced because of you know exceptions we have to act on the thrown exceptions then and there itself composability is also compromised as exceptions you know they have their own way of uh, you know uh, they have their own 
uh, way of working and that doesn't actually you know fit well with any other functional programming idiom so i guess exception handling is is not the the, the right way to move forward and yes the magical number 7 plus or minus 2 as quoted by mr george miller you know it it is actually the barrier of a human mind to remember it's the upper limit which you know limits our you know processing capabilities and we are not able to process things so as things keep on adding on top of one another we tend to you know forget things and the the usual way of you know doing programming it doesn't scale okay now this is a snippet from the code that i've written the green line the i mean the green lines they suggest the business logic and the color which is somewhat red it it uh, it is basically error handling so so this is not the problem i mean error handling it is a necessary evil we have to do it but this is not the problem this is the outcome of the problem because we do not have a mechanism where each you know unit of computation can be you know considered as a success or a failure and it can be handled not then and there like we do not have you know if and when and then we have a conditional action to you know act on it there and there itself like we have if then and else so there is no mechanism to you know separate the concerns of of conditional checks so this is what i am going to be talking about like how to you know get those abstractions and see how how we can you know you know get away from that spaghetti code and write our code in a very declarative manner so how can we do better so this photograph really inspires me to you know look for better and better ways and keep expanding the expressiveness of closure okay for the mechanism i was which i was talking about that each unit of computation I and mean, then we call it as operation can be you know uh, represented as a failure or a success now if we recall that again that control flow which i was talking about so if we consider the happy cases like if everything goes right so each successive i mean operation it feeds into one another so we start off from validating i mean uh, we we start off from web validations till the point we actually insert our our data in the db so how about having a, having a mechanism where everything falls in a in a chain and whenever there is a failure we just you know jump out of it and we know the context like what failed and where the, where did the things actually go wrong so i'll be talking uh, about a library called promenade the source code of it and uh, since i was talking about you know handling or expressing failure and and successes so this is how a, a typical failure looks like uh, so 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 we basically tag a failure with this prom fail and this is the output of the repl it looks like i have the the the, 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 the second code with it and any regular value is considered as a success so for a failure we just tag it and then how it short circuits and comes to the error handler that's that's the way forward so so handling success and failure outcomes so let's talk about another use case where we want to list out all the stories of a particular owner so here i am using the either thread last macro which you know acts on the result of the previous step so we start off with owner id and that is you know pass to list stories if list stories is i mean it, if it does its job perfectly it's a success it comes to respond 200 if it fails then it goes to failure to response so how so so basically list stories is a success handler and you provide and you provide a failure handler within a uh, i mean within a vector so the first element of it is is the failure and the second is the success so i mean to make to make matters you know more uh, clear uh so we can we can see this example where owner id is passed to validate input i mean the check we we had already in place if that particular if, if this particular check if it fails it comes to failure to response 
If not, it goes down the chain. It goes to list stories, and if list stories fail, obviously it's going to come to failure to response. Otherwise, it goes to response one, and so on and so forth. We can actually extend this chain. Like I have a case conversion in place where I want to return, you know, I have uh, data saved in the uh, in the kebab case, but I want to, you know, uh, send send across as as, as the camel case. Similarly, we can chain together using macros such as either set first, either as. They they have you know some similarity with with the the threading macros we all know, like set first, as, and set last, and so forth. Okay, so having all this you know together, so this is how our code, I mean the revised version of of the code looks. So we start off with, I mean in the second part. We start off with invalidated content type and all the necessary steps required to basically save the story. And if in between any of the steps they fail, it is actually met by a failure to response. And we we tag errors in between, and we actually provide uh, information such as error, bad input, source length. So this is basically for our own need to basically classify errors and you know see uh, where it all went wrong, and so on and so forth. Similarly, we can see that we caught an exception, but we did not throw an exception. We, uh, we rather we we actually tabbed, I mean, the failure, and we say that we were unable to save the story, and it was a 503 service unavailable. In the end, this is what we usually get: I mean, error handling versus business logic. So the green steps they are actually the right side of of the control flow i mean all the necessary checks and what all happens I and mean, and the red part is actually where we you know deal with with all the failures and i mean how do and then this actually makes you know error propagation a lot more easier for us and and we do not rely on exceptions because i mean according to me when they are thrown I, I, it's like the, the errors are thrown at my face so yeah Okay, conclusions. Uh, so this was actually a sort of a you know learning experience. I would say that ignorance is bliss, but I could no more uh, ignore. I mean, the spaghetti code I was dealing with day in and day out, and I thought of you know cutting away from some of the idioms that you know that were there. Okay, we have to do it. So yeah, that's that, and there are like other ways also. You know, many people have come up with their own. Library, how to deal with errors, specifically with error handling. So yeah, a lot many people, you know, they are moving, you know, looking for solutions and cutting away from yeah the common I mean, idioms that we follow. So some of the references over here, and yeah, that's it. Questions? One with the links, okay, yeah. So, someone was asking a question. Okay, okay. yeah. Uh, Hello? Yeah, so my question is that it's not a question actually. Can you show the code for failure to response in this particular case? Failure to response. This one? No, I mean border slash failure to response. That. Oh, I have actually not put that up. So basically, what it does. So I mean, so failure to response gets this particular thing that error source and type. So there, I'm classifying the error. If if it is you know bad but bad input. Then I have a and you know I have a I have a handler over there which you know converts those errors into the web responses that I have to give. Okay. So, so but there also you will need to handle a case where say uh, an unknown error is thrown and failure to respond doesn't know that. It's like you would like you would want to throw that as an exception, right? 
No, so uh, everything which I mean, so this is basically errors. This is basically extrapolating errors as data. So whatever is returned is data, and we have to handle it. So even while we are handling errors, we need to have some sort of spec where we actually check. Okay, this is the you know error message I'm getting. This is where it's being getting tagged, and this is how you know I would how I mean I would like to you know handle it. So yeah, it's there. It's one time job would be there. I mean, one time we have to you know actually set, and it's not a it's not a very you know uh, it's it's a very big job. It's it's as and when. I mean, whenever you you know find some some of the cases, you you start adding them to, to your handle. So, but there is a big chance that you miss adding it to failure to response, and something is not classified as a response. It goes ahead as a success. So, as a, this because there is no short circuiting happening immediately, right? So, I mean, the references. I mean, libraries which I've shared. So this ring belt, right? This is actually the one. I mean, the one-time job uh, at Kankar, Sri Kankar, that we have done, and this basically handles all those scenarios. So yeah, it will be there. You have to have a mechanism where you, you know, you have to have, uh, you know, checks for the, for the tagging and the, the error type which is you know getting propagated and handling it. So yeah, it will be there. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Steven has a question over there. Hey, uh, thanks for this. This is this is really nice. And back, I don't write uh, code anymore. But back when I was writing Closure, I wish I had something like this um, because it looks like it, it cleans a lot of stuff up. I'm actually curious. Uh, do you find that there's a category of errors where you still actively use exceptions in your applications and you sort of segregate between error handling data-wise and error handling exception-wise? Or do you forcibly try to convert all of your apps at this point to, to use either uh, and similar constructs to deal with data, uh, deal with errors data-wise? Oh, okay. Uh, that's a very good question. So, I mean, regarding exceptions, I would say, uh, I mean, me personally, I I generally tend to catch them and not throw them. I mean, exceptions I generally use in the case where you know we are involved with any third-party you know integration. Suppose we are deserializing a JSON from a DB. Now that can be a corrupted you know blob of data. So we would have an error over there, and and it will probably blow up. So why not actually you know uh, catch that exception and not throw it, and instead fail it like the how the tagging is done. And then you know, getting a proper error message, and you know, letting the error handler know, okay, this is what you know this, that has happened. So this is what I generally try to do. I try to catch them, but not throw them. Yeah. No, no more questions. All right. Thank you, Varun, so much.